Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to my FIFA 19 Ajax Road to Glory. Now before we get into today's video, I just want to say a huge big thank you for the love and support on the channel. And as always guys, at the start of these episodes, we're quickly going to recap on the previous. And the previous one was our first time where I have been shocked at legendary difficulty. The first time I have felt the pressure build against me. Now obviously we played Burnley in the previous game, that was the first game, and we absolutely battered them 3-1, but I always thought that was going to happen because the game before that, and that was from episode 1, we had beat Crystal Palace 6-1, so we were coming off the back end of a 6-1, we were facing off against Burnley, and I thought, you know what, the confidence is going to be high amongst the team, we're surely going to dominate Burnley, and we did, we beat them 3-1, and I felt like we cruised it, but then we got into the semi-finals, of the European International Cup. And we were facing off against a team called Calgary. And I was thinking, do you know what? It's another one of those games I feel confident we should really win it. Now, after 92 minutes after the final whistle blew, it was only 1-1 and it went down to penalties. And the thing that I hate about penalties, but I love watching them, love playing them, but the thing I hate is it's 50-50. The player's going to have a shot if the keeper saves it. He saves it. If he doesn't, it's in the back of the net and it's one goal for the team. And unfortunately, the first player, I think it was Zayak for us that stood up to take the first penalty, actually put it into the keeper's hands. And unfortunately, the keeper did save it. And then we got knocked out in the semi-finals of the European International Cup against Calgary after getting beat 5-4 on penalties. The rest of the penalties were absolutely sublime. But now this is where it all starts. We've completed pre-season. We've been knocked out of it. Now we are about to start league football. Now I'm quickly going to go over exactly what's going on in today's episode, guys, and explain a little bit. So you can see there we played four games in the European International Cup and then were sadly knocked out by Calgary. If we jump over to August, we have our first game. I apologise if I do pronounce any of these wrong, guys. I will be listening to either you know radio or videos or anything like that so I can pronounce these names correctly. But right now I'm going to go with... Heracels, I think that's how you probably pronounce them. So in today's episode, the first game is going to be against Heracels. The second game is going to be against, now I don't know if you call them VVV Venlo, or you just call them Venlo. I'm really sorry if I'm pronouncing them wrong, guys. And then what I'm going to do is, so those two teams we're going to play in today's episode, and then in the next episode, which is going to be episode 5, we're going to play FC Emin, and then we're also going to complete the transfer window. So in the next episode, there'll only be one game and then the transfer window. And the reason for that is because you guys blew up the comment section using the hashtag transfer in and transfer out. There was so much going on and that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now. So the plan is talk transfers, possibly sign some new players before we get into any of the games. Then we're going to advance all the way to the very first game of the league. I'll do all the player development, do all the boring stuff off camera. If we sell anyone, I'll make sure to leave it in, but I want to keep this video nice and short and choppy. Like I said, transfers, then advance all the way. But what I quickly want to cover right now is the straw polls. Firstly, thank you so much to everyone that did vote on the first straw poll and also the second straw poll. Now, to go back to the first straw poll, I'll put it on camera right now. We said, what player slash players should we sign slash loan in the Ajax Road to Glory? Phil Foden got top with 12 and he was our first transfer in and we signed him in the previous episode. Then in second place was Tuzar and Weyer on seven votes. Then Bardi was in third on six votes. And then in fourth, we've got Teti. This is where I'm going today. If you now look on screen now, this was the previous one. So in episode one, that was the one with Foden. And then in episode two, I put this brand new one. Now, the reason I've done another one is because so many of you guys had left the hashtag transfer in with so many players. And it also, which thanks to Lee, I think it was, that spotted it. And also maybe Royal. Brad, you missed off Loftus-Cheek. And I am sorry, guys, but I did miss him off the first straw poll. That's why I put him in the second one. Now, you can see on screen right now, he is top with seven votes. So Loftus-Cheek is a target we will be going after. Then in second place, we've got Simeone. Now, I didn't realise this, and I think it was thanks to... I either want to say... I want to say MTA plays. I feel like he was the man that dropped this fact. That is the manager of Atletico Madrid. Is it Diego Simeone? I think it is Diego Simeone. That is his son, which I never knew. So there is a fact for you if you didn't know that. It's actually his son. So he is in second, but he's joint second. Makili? Makili? Let's go with Makili. And I really don't know how you pronounce I really could do with one of you guys telling me how to pronounce his name. Umpacano. Umpacano? I want to go with that. Anyway, let's just call him up for now, just to make it a little bit easy for me. 
So what I've done right now, which you'll see on screen, is I've already gone in for Loftus Cheeks. Now I made the mistake because I remembered as I was doing this, somebody said, Brad, he's going to cost you too much, just loan him. Now sadly, I tried to buy him. Tried to buy him at 15 mil and they said they'll think about it. So we're going to wait on that. We've also gone in for Timothy Wyatt. We've ex PSG have accepted it on loan. Now we have to wait to see what he says. And also in the previous episode, we sorted out Lucas Tuzart for 15 million and also Bardi for 14.4. You guys said you wanted another midfielder, right? So we're going to be getting either a CDM, a centre mid or a centre mid in one of those players. You wanted a camp, we've brought Phil Foden in. And the other position or the other two positions you really wanted me to bolster and build on was the centre back, which up has six votes for. And he is the highest centre-back. He has the most votes out of all the centre-backs so far. But the other position was a right-back. You guys said, Brad, you need a right-back. So what I've done is there is a straw poll down below with every single right-back we have ever had throughout this whole series so far. So you got McKelly or McKeely, however you pronounce him, Teti, Arias, and there we go, João Pedro. He is the man I wanted to mention because... He was actually mentioned in the previous episode, and in the previous episode I said, I'm not doing any more transfers, no more people are going on the list until January. Royal had commented saying, go for Pedro. Pedro wasn't actually in the game, I couldn't find him, and that's because the way his name was spelt. So what I've done right now is there'll be a straw poll down below with João Pedro, Santiago Arias, Nordi McKelly, and also... Kenny Tetty. They will be four players, four right backs in a straw poll down below. We are going to sign one of them in the next episode. So you guys need to go and vote right now on one of those right backs. And then I have done exactly what you guys wanted. You wanted a central attack in mid. You all voted. Foden was top. Foden's in. You all wanted another central midfielder. That's what we're looking at today. You wanted a centre back and you also wanted a right back. The centre mid and the centre back will be a position that we look at today. And by the looks of it, up, who has the most votes out of all the centre-backs, he will be joining the team if we can get him, but we're still yet to get all of his stats. We haven't got his overall, his stats, his value, anything like that. So all these players will hopefully be scouted by the time we get to match day. But what I'm going to do for you guys now is I'm going to cut all this boring stuff up. I'm going to advance all the way to the match day. If we get any news on some of the players, if we get scouts come back, if we sell any players or loan any players or even the fact like Timothy Weyer coming on loan. If any of that stuff props up, I'll make sure to leave it in the video. But let's get down to this game. Let's get into the episode. And I'm looking forward to playing our first two games within the league. And within advance in just one day, we've already had two emails. First one's first. We've had a transfer offer in for Arizula. Let's go and click into this. So he's worth €875,000. They've offered one We'll accept that. He's a player that is moving on, so we'll go ahead and accept that. No problem, we can delete that. And way is low move rejected. Mr. Brad, Timothy Weyer has rejected the proposal to join our club on loan. You can consider these negotiations to be over. Why? I just don't understand. So he's at PSG, clearly not going to get played because he's not going to get ahead of Neymar, Mbappé, Cavani, Di Maria. He's not getting ahead of any of them. He's got a chance to come on loan to us for a year. But he doesn't want to. Now, can I go back in for him? I don't think I'm going to... I can't right now, but I'm going to try again. I'm going to try and get him on loan once again. Because you guys did vote for him. And he was pretty high on seven votes. The other striker was Simeone. Which I will also look at in today's episode. I'll either look to buy him or possibly take him on loan. Because I think if we buy Loftus-Cheek or we buy up then I don't know if we're going to have too much money left. But to just quickly show you guys for an advance and more, we've got 20.56 million euro left. We're obviously going to look at moving some players on as well. But now what I'll do, guys, is continue to advance in some time and leave any good bits in. And another two days later, and we've had another email in. Sadly, this one is Loftus Cheek transfer offer unacceptable. They want 16.9 million euro with a 10% sell-on clause. I think what we'll do is we'll jump back into this and I will try it again. Let's negotiate Really, with me getting the other two players at around the 14 and a half million, let's say, on an average, I really want to be paying 15 million or less. So I think what we'll do is let's propose a new transfer offer. Let's offer, because he was highest, and you guys want him in clearly, let's offer that. Plus, let's boost that right up, because we're not going to be selling him to 25%, so 14.8 million euro. Surely. Oh, Really? You're just going to keep doing that to me. And they're not going to let me add on a transfer. See, they wanted a sell-on clause. And now they don't. 
So the last thing I can do is let's offer 15.2. I really don't want to go too high here. 15.2. Sticking at that 19.6. That's all of our money gone then. We won't be able to sign anyone else. Let's, let's try 15. They may well walk away and we may have to get them on loan here, but I'm doing the best. Of, oh, they're just they're not then they're just not gonna play ball here, are they? Let's be honest. Last off of 15.4. I mean that is more than I already want to be paying. Well, Chelsea's rep has walked out. That is fine. Me. Maybe we'll look to acquire him in the next week or so on a loan. His weekly wage is 76,000. See, he's on a lot more than the others. 21.5. And 39, Loftus-Cheek is going to cost us a lot of money. But of course, he's English. He's coming from Chelsea. He was always going to cost us a lot of money. My problem now, as you see, is Ennis Bardi and Tuzar are probably going to walk away because we haven't done anything. So I think what I will do is, what are they on right now? 21.5. Let's delegate. Let's offer in between. Let's start at a 23. Let's not go any higher than 33. Let's say that. So at least now we'll keep them a little bit interested same with Tuzar. Let's go for... He's not going to want to listen to 18. Let's go again. 23. Let's take it up to 33. Same again. And let's see if any of them bite on that. So now I'm going to, once again, guys, advance in a little bit more time. And hopefully we'll have some emails coming. We did have another two that I just quickly deleted before. And that was just scout reports. Obviously, when everyone's got scouted, then we'll actually properly look at the transfer hub. Right, so another two transfers in. One for Vobet. We won't be moving them on. And one for Veltman, someone that you guys did want me to sell. 7.7 .7 million euros worth six and a half. I think we'll delegate and try and get a little bit more. So let's start it. Let's start it at 11. And let's say we want at the least eight and a half. Or let, yeah, let's go eight and a half. Because if we get that, we're going to look at bringing in a right back. And obviously, you guys, if you haven't already or you've skipped the video, make sure you go down below to the description and the comment section and vote on what right back we should sign. Because there's going to be either four, possibly even five right backs. And whoever wins that top vote, that will be the play that we go in for in the next episode. But we can go ahead and delete them. And again, guys. I will advance in some more time. The main man that I want to look at that we could be getting in today's episode is this man here. Diot Umkano. And he is valued at 13 million and a weekly wage of 18,000. Now, I think we could possibly get him maybe in the region of, I would say, 15 to 16. And he's got a release clause there of 24.7. So I think what I'm going to do right now is we're going to try and buy him. Why not? You guys want a centre-back. He's the highest-rated centre-back right now. I've never played with him, never had him in any of my other career modes. So let's just get right into this. Now, what do we offer? Let's offer 15 and a half. I feel like that is a decent first offer. That's somewhere to start. Surely they're not going to walk straight away from that. So 15.5. What do you say to that? We're going to have to do better than that. Wow, 21.5. Okay. We haven't got too much money to play with, but we will have some money hopefully coming in. Let's go up to 16. An extra 500k. Are you biting on that? His price tag set at 21.5. I mean, for the sake of that, it's not far off what his buyout clause is. So, let's take a risk here. Let's go. 16.5 and a sell-on clause of 10%. They're going to need some time to think about it. That's fine. We'll wait and see what they say on that. But the plan today, guys, like I've said, is to sign a centre mid. Whether that is going to be Bardi, Tuzart... Or Loftus Cheek. Now, by looks of it, Loftus Cheek's probably going to have to be on loan. And then we're also going to look at getting the centre back, Umkano, if we can. And then obviously the right back is down below in the comment section and the description. Vote on that short one. I know if you might think, Brad, what about Simeone? Right now it's between Weyer and Simeone. I'm going to try and get Weyer again on loan. If we can't and we haven't got the money to get Simeone, I may look at getting him on loan. But we'll see what happens. But again, I'm going to advance in some more time and wow. Real Madrid playing 105.2 million euro for Icardi from Inter Milan. Wow. Let's advance in some more time. And hopefully we'll sell some of our players as well and get a little bit more money. Right, so we're pretty much now at the end of July. We'd already seen that Bardi has accepted his contract for 23,000 a week. Tuzar has now accepted his, but he wants 27,500 a week. Veltman's has been agreed now with Real Sociedad at 10.7. I'm going to hold off and wait and see what Bezektas says. Because if Bezektas want to pay any more than that, we will accept that deal. We've had a transfer offer as well from Wolfsburg for Shona, which we will go ahead and dive into now. So he's valued at 6. They've offered 6.6. 6. 
let's just delegate it. Let's start it off at 10 or 10 and a half. And let's say we'll take seven and a half for him because then it's pretty much nearly paid for Phil Foden, which is perfect. So we'll go ahead and sort that out. And we've also sold a player. Kearney and his agent have agreed on personal terms with NY Red Bulls. The deal to sell Kearney for 1.95 million euro has been finalised. The board has given us a 1.4 million euro, which is nice because we need every penny that counts because it's not like a Liverpool career mode. It's not like a Manchester City or Barcelona or Real Madrid where we've got loads of money. We only have a little bit of money that we have to be very, very careful with. I tell you what, guys, I don't seem to really be able to advance one or two days without hearing something else and getting a shed load of emails. So first things first, a deal has been agreed with Wolfsburg for Shona. We've accepted it and we're just waiting to hear back. I can't remember the exact figure, but it's more about this man here, Veltman. Now, Real Sociedad have agreed 10.7. Yet, Bezektas only managed to agree on 10.2. So, we'll go ahead and accept the agreement for Real Sociedad. So, we want to click it. And I don't want it to be theirs. I want it to be theirs. Accept that. And let's hope that doesn't fall through. Now, if it does fall through, we've always got Bezektas to fall back on. And it's official. Las Shona has agreed on personal terms with Wolfsburg. And the deal is we accepted 8.2 million euro. It's been finalised and the board have allocated us a 6 million, which is really good now because if we get Loftus-Cheek on loan or bring Tuzot in or Bardi, 6 million pounds of what we pay for them was technically free. It's just replacing Shona. If we go over to the office now, there you go, 38.91 million euro. Now we're starting to build it up a little bit, but we still need to sign a centre mid a centre-back and also a right-back with that money, but it's looking a lot more positive now. And unfortunately, Timothy Weyer once again has rejected to join us. I just don't understand why he's really not going to get into that PSG team. I think, guys, I'll try it third time, lucky. I'll go in for Weyer again. And another sale has gone through. We have sold Joel Veltman. His agent has agreed on personal terms with Real Sociedad. And the deal was to sell them for 10.7 million euro. It's been finalised and the board have allocated us 8 million euro. I'll tell you what, guys. We may not have many players coming through the door in today's episode. But we certainly have a lot going out. As you can see, we're just short of 47 million euro. Which is perfect because we've got to make some signings before we properly start our journey in this league. But as you can see, we've only now got five days to go until we're playing our first game in the league. But we'll see if any more transfers come in or we make any more transfers in those five days. Otherwise, we should just be up to match day and getting ready to play our first league game. Right, guys, and here we are at match day. We didn't have any transfers in or any transfers out in the last five days, but we are about to play our first league game against Heracels, and I am super excited for this. The lineup I am putting out is the strongest lineup we possibly can. We've got Kasper Dahlberg up top as striker, Neres, Tadic, and Ziyech in the central attacking midfield roles, De Jong and Eating in the central defensive midfield roles, Tagliafico, Daly Blind, Dillet, and Masrui at the back, with of course Onana in goal. Now we have got Phil Foden on the bench, looking forward to bringing him in at half time, maybe around the 50 or 60 minute mark, depending on how the rest of our central attacking midfielders are doing. But I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays. And as you can see there, Real Madrid signed Leroy Sane for 74.7 million euro. But here we go. It is our first game in the league. Foden to make his Ajax debut. He will be getting on the pitch at some point. I'm super excited for this. Of course, we're playing on legendary difficulty. We're at the Johan Cruyff Arena. Let's get into this. I'm excited for this. It's our first league game. Heracles or Herasols or however you pronounce Hi, it. Don't worry, guys. In the next two or three episodes, I will be listening to how you pronounce teams, players, managers, and all that. So I will get used to pronouncing it. By the end of this series, I will be able to speak fluent, no problem, no problem whatsoever. I am looking forward to this. I'm sure it is Herasol, so I'm sure that's how you probably pronounce it. But let's go ahead and get into this first game. It's the first game of the league. Let's kick it off with a big bang. Here we go. Ziyech, round the corner to Dolberg. Dolberg back to Ziyech. Let's pull this back. Nice little thinking now. Looking for Dolberg! Makes it 1-0. Wow, wow, wow. We're four and a half minutes in, and we're already 1-0 up. Ziyech just lofted that just over the two players in front of him. And Dolberg, in at least two or three feet away from space, just takes it down and volleys it. Easy, easy, easy. 
Look at that. Bang. And Kasper Dahlberg puts that into the roof of the net and that is his first goal. Is it the Eredivisie? Or Eredivisie? Is that how you pronounce it? I'll learn how to pronounce the league. For now, we'll just call it the league. But what a great start to this league it is. Waiting for Neres to get round there. Let's play that through now. And Neres should probably have all the pace in the world to get past these players. Now let's play that into the middle. Nice ball in. Tadic! Oh, and he's put it wide. Wow! The way Dusan Tadic was scoring in pre-season, you don't expect them to be fluffing them, but... To Dolberg. Still Dolberg. Playing it around the corner now to Zayac. And Zayac is surely going to be in. Zayac! Playing in back post. Nice little dinking look for Tadic! And the keeper pulls off an incredible save. Wow! Right before half-time, Tadic with a looping head that it went in slow motion. And the keeper managed to get to it, get a touch to it, but only managed to palm it away. But the referee has blown for half-time. We're going in with the 1-0 lead. I feel like we are definitely the dominant team right now. And I think at half-time, I think we're going to take Dusan Tadic off, who's had a few shots, but is getting a little bit tired now. And we are going to give a debut to Phil Foden. 73 overall to play in that central attacker midfield role. But let's get into the second half against Heresals. And possibly do a little bit more damage. And we really could do a find a second goal to put this to bed. Oh, nicely done. Frankie De Jong. Standing tall. Looking solid. That's what we like to see. It's play that into the middle. Go right round now to Neres. Surely Neres to make it two. And he does. That is... Is what we are talking about. Neres reminds me so much of Ryan Cessio. Give him a little bit of space on his left foot. And it's going to the top right corner every single time. It's a good performance from a Absolutely good unbelievable. Team. Well done Neres. Look at that. Boom. He is going to be a quality player this year. I think he'll score between 10 and 15 goals easy. And I'm hoping Dolberg gets 20 plus. Is Foden up to Dolberg. Into Neres, Neres looking to turn his man, Neres on the left foot again, makes it three. He's scored, he scored two in the last 20 minutes. I said I think he's going to score between 10 and 15 this year. I'm changing that from 15 to 20 because he is absolutely smashing it right now. Here's Foden, Foden to Ziyech, back to Foden, looking to hit him one, wow, big strike from Foden and a big save. From Heracles is goalkeeper. Let's try and get Huntelaar on this one. Ball in. Huntelaar is going to get there. Huntelaar jumps. Huntelaar does, and I tell you what, he nearly makes it for him. We're going to go for Huntelaar again because he looks tasty with jump. And if he jumps for this and gets to it, Huntelaar's there again. And this time it's in the back of the net. Wow. It is going to be classed, I think, as an own goal because it did come off the defender. But I literally just said on that last corner, Huntelot is looking tasty for rising above the defenders. His jumper looks good. And he does very well there. But unfortunately, it goes between the defenders' legs, comes off the back of his heel, and ends up in the back of the net. But in fact, Clash Jan Huntelot manages to get that goal. I suppose it was on target. So I think we have possibly put this game to bed. And we are going to win our first league game 4 0 on legendary difficulty. Let's make sure we stay solid here lads. Make sure we stay solid. Don't risk it now. So late on into this game. Let's make sure we deal with this. Oh, and I don't believe it. Peterson, we were one minute or two minutes away from keeping a clean sheet. We were 4-0 up. And unfortunately, they have stopped us getting our very first clean sheet. 4-1, that is just a sickener. It's just a consolation prize, that, but... I really right thought we were going to keep that. The only thing I can say now is, can we push on now and look for another goal? No, we can't. We pass the ball back to Foden and the referee blows for full time. Now, you know what, guys? I really wanted to get a clean sheet, but the fact we scored four goals in our first league game on Legendary, I am very, very happy with that. Dolberg picking up a goal, Neres getting two, and then Huntel out scoring ahead at late into the game. And then they, of course... Went and scored their goal. Look at the stats. 16 shots now on target. So they're three shots, two on target. We were definitely the dominant team in that game. Right, guys. So we now have two huge decisions. Firstly, after me battling and battling against RB Leipzig, you'd have seen in the video, I was offering 17 million euro. We walked away from it, or they walked away from it. Now what I've done is I just thought, you know what? We'll delegate and try and get them. 
They've now accepted 16.2. They could have had even more money out of us, but they've accepted the 16.2. So what we're going to do now is we're going to accept that because he is the highest centre-back that you guys want. I've also gone in for Ennis Bardi again so we can get something sorted there. And then obviously with the shortlist, we're still waiting for Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Gone in for Bardi. We're going to try Weir again. I'm going to delegate to loan. We want him for one year. This is the last time I'm going to try him now. If he doesn't want to join, he doesn't want to join. But the other thing right now is the offer or the transfer offer from Galatasaray for Class Jan Huntelaar for six million. Now he's valued at 4.3. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delegate and I'm going to say, if you would give me between nine and seven, I'll be willing to let him go. And then if we can't get Weyer on loan, we'll see how much Giovanni Simeone's going to cost. And if he's going to cost too much, we may well look at getting him on loan. The only issue I could really mess myself up here with is we've only got Weyer and Simeone as striker options. They were the only two players that you guys recommended for striker because we don't really need one. we got Dolberg, we got Huntelaar. If we sell Huntelaar, though, and we can't get Weyer, and we can't get Diego Simeone, then maybe in the next episode or the episode after that, we will have to look at a new striker. But I don't want you guys to recommend any strikers because we have two right now. Don't want to be really adding anyone else to the list. We may well not sell Huntelaar and maybe sell him in January and look at someone then. But for now, we've gone back to Galatasaray and asked for a little bit more money. So what I'm going to do now, guys, advance to the next game. If anything pops up, I'll be sure to leave it in the video. And within two days, we have had a load more good news. First things first... We've agreed another, for the second time, we've agreed the purchase of Ennis Bardi for 13 million. We've also reached agreement with Freiburg for 4.4 million euro for daily sync grievance. So we'll go ahead and accept that. Now, I think when they first come in, they offered like 2.9. He's valued at 2.6. They're now going to pay us 4.4. Hopefully, that won't fall through. So we've accepted that. We'll go ahead and delete that. The agreement for Hunter Law sale. Galatasaray are willing to pay us 9 million euro. Now I'm thinking surely Weyer and Simeone, surely one of them is going to join us and surely for not too much more. Simeone is valued at, I think it's around 15. So let's say we get 9 for Huntelaar and we pay 18 for Simeone. He's only actually going to cost us 9 million of our actual money. This could be huge. I mean, you guys said to move on Huntelaar and it's your guys'. I don't even know why I'm pausing here. I don't even know why I'm thinking about it. You guys are seeing two or three comments Transfer out, class Jan Huntelaar. So, there you go, guys. As long as he accepts personal terms, he is moving to Galatasaray. Finally, Diat Upkano has accepted and is looking forward to meeting us to, the st to start discussing the terms of his move to Ajax. Now, what I'm going to do right now, guys, because you want the centre-back, is I am going to go and sign, or at least I am going to attempt. So we're going to negotiate a contract. And we're going to see how much he's going to cost us per week. So I think he was on 18 or 15. He's on 18. Okay, so he wants an important role. Let's see if we can bring this down to a rotational. Let's see if he'll bite on that. He wants to be an important player. Okay, we'll give him that. We'll rotate him with Daily Blend. That is completely fine. Five years. Wow, you never see players ask for five years. I am happy for you to come for five years. He doesn't want a release clause. Again, I'm happy with that. Now that we've agreed on that, let's get straight to it and talk money. And he's going to wait for me to make him an offer. So I think what we'll do is, his current wage is 18. Let's offer him less. Let's offer him less, but offer him 150k sign. And let's see that, 15k a week and 150 grand. Bear in mind, he's only 19. That's a fair, see I've probably just overpaid now. When they say that's a fair offer, my client is happy. You usually want to see them say, it's not quite what my client wanted, but we'll accept it. But no, that was just a straight accept. And there we go, guys. We've made our second signing. We've got Phil Foden, and now we've got Diat Umkano. Could these players make their debut in our next game against Venlo? You can see there, we are already on legendary and top of the Eredivisie League, if that's how you pronounce it. If it's not, I do apologise. Now, we just paid 16.2 million how much have we got left? We've still got 31 million to spend. Right, guys, now I clicked this by accident. I tried to delegate a loan offer, but instead I've actually got in for one. So I may as well leave this in the video. It's for Ruben Loftus-Cheek. We're going to ask him on a one-year loan. 
I didn't even mean to click this. They're happy to loan them out. Okay, let's see where we go from here. They want it 60-40. Okay, so it only costs us 45.6 thousand euro a week. Say only, still a lot of money. Will you meet me 50-50? I mean, he's not going to get in the Chelsea team. Wow, they've just gone for it. Sure, we'll agree to split Loftus-Cheek's wage 50-50. Have we maybe just signed Loftus-Cheek? As long as he accepts that, we may well have just signed Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Right, and here we are at match day, guys, where we are about to face off against Venlo for the second game in the league. Now, before we get into the squad, because the squad is now super exciting, it's best that I go over to the office and show you some emails. We've got some good news some bad news and some more good news and if we jump over to the office you will straight away see it first of all Ennis Bardi has accepted and now he is looking forward to our transfer uh, our contract negotiations should I say the bad news is where his loan move is rejected again where it really does not want to come and the last bit of good news is Ruben Loftus-Cheek has accepted a one-year loan move to our club we now have Ruben Loftus-Cheek here for a year and I think guys I may well about to be going in for Ennis Bardi as well. I think that is the best move for me right now. Bring in Ennis Bardi. We look at a right back that you guys will be voting on down below in the description and comment section. And then we also then maybe look at a striker if we move on Huntelaar. But the team is looking tasty. You can see here we got Dolberg up top as the striker. Neres, Foden and Zayak in the central attack midfield role. You can see Foden getting his proper start and debut. We've got De Jong and Eating in the central defensive midfield roles. Tagliafico, Blind, De Litt and Masrui at the back with Onana in goal. And you can be sure to know that Ruben Loftus-Cheek is on the bench and so is Umpecano. Now, I am excited for this and I hope by the next episode, whatever this Diot, Umpecano, Up, Umpecano, whatever his name is, I hope I can pronounce it by the next episode but guys let's get into this game i'm hoping it's not gonna be too long because when i look over at the recording software it's telling me i've been recording for an hour and 37 minutes but i know there was quite a bit that i cut out when we were advancing in time and transfers and stuff like that but let's get into this game we're traveling to court lane to face off against venlo let's make sure we bag another three points and let's do it with style kicking well, this episode off with the second game the and he is the man Neres he is top goal line. scorer after one game it's only been one game but he did score two goals and if he continues to do that he'd have 40 or 50 by the end of the season listen to this little tune here what's going on this is why I like playing other leagues because one of the things that I like that's different to the Premier League is when the match starts the club badges are like holographs on the pitch and that's not a thing see you can see there that's not a thing in the Premier League but I like it in this league so let's go ahead and get into this first off see what damage we can do and I'm excited to see how some of these new players get on only to eating though is Frankie de Jong is Neres looking round out to Foden who takes a touch that's a nice touch from Foden oh Foden could have put us 1-0 up and unfortunately the keeper pulls off an incredible save to Foden, who's going to push on the trend player through to Dolberg. Dolberg through on goal, makes it 1 0. Wow. Phil Foden, what a player. Can I just say that now? What a player. If you guys play career mode, go and get Foden. I just can't believe it. He reminds me of like a Phil Coutinho. Central attack midfielder, so quick of his feet. He darts in and out. Look at this. Moves the ball quick. Plays it round the back of the defender for Dolberg to run onto. And Dolberg scores his second goal. Foden running into plenty of space. Look at him go. Look at him go. He's got nothing on though. He's going to look for Dolberg. Is this going to be a second assist? Yes, it is. What is going on? This Foden and Dolberg link up. It's like they've been best friends for years. Foden picks out some incredible passes. I feel like the only word out of, or the only name out of my mouth right now is Foden, Foden, Foden. But I mean, he's bagged two assists. Dolberg's got two goals in this game. Trust me, guys, this series is only going to get better and better. Oh, big save there. As I was saying, the series is going to get better and better, and especially with that man there. Oh, Nana, I watched the highlights of Ajax versus Bayern Munich. And he pulled off some incredible saves. And already, what a save that was. In Ball the into the middle. Let's deal with it. Deal with it. it was wow. He was there and again. He was going to tip it over the bar. But nevertheless, the referee has blown for half time. And we are going at half time. I'm going to take a little look of how the fitness is amongst Foden right now. Is looking worse for wear. But 
He's been running up and down the park at court lane for the last 45 minutes. We're going to get into the second half exactly the same team. I'll give Foden another little couple of runs, and then we'll have to look at taking him off. But let's get into the second half. Is Zayak? Zayak's going to hit it, and again Zayak. Oh! Eventually got the shot off, and it wasn't too far away at all. Just over the bar. Dolberg pushing on. Let's play it around the corner. Here we go. Tadic round to Neres. Neres coming forward. Is he still onside? Should be. Puts it in the back of the net, but he is offside. Took a very long time for the referee to blow his whistle there. A very long time indeed. Up to Dolberg. Dolberg to Neres. And unfortunately, we go to get another attack going. But the referee blows for full time. Right, guys. And here we are back at the central for the last time in today's episode. Just quickly notice in the top left, we have now gone up to an overall 84 manager, which I am very happy with. We've got off to a great start in the league, especially considering we're playing on legendary difficulty now. We're doing very, very well. Now, of course, I said at the very start of this series, it was your guys' series. It was your guys' career mode, your guys' road to glory. Now, the last thing to do is down below in the comment section, and in the description, I'll put it in both, there will be a straw poll about a right back. We need to sign a right back. That is one of the other main positions you guys said we needed to improve and build on. There will be four or five players within that straw poll, all right backs. You guys go and vote for your favourite right back and we will look to sign them in the next episode. And also in the next episode, we've tried to get Timothy Weyer. There's no way he's coming. We can't buy him and he won't come on loan because he thinks he's going to get in PSG's squad. As we all know, he's definitely not. We're probably going to have, by the time all the players we're selling are actually sold, we should have around the £44 million mark. If we get a right back for, say, £20 million, that leaves us £24 million to spend. I'm sure we can get Simeone, who is currently valued at, I think, £15 million. But we need a right back, and we'll need a striker if we sell Hunter Lot. Now, in the next episode, I don't want you guys to leave any strikers, because we're going to go in for Simeone. That was someone's comment. That is someone that you wanted me to go in for. That's what I'm going to do. What an absolutely incredible episode that has been. And I also want to say a massive thank you for the absolutely incredible, ridiculous amount of support. Support? Ridiculous amount of support I have had on this series so far. You guys are banging the views, the likes, the comments. It's been ridiculous. And I'm just so glad so many of you are enjoying it. And I think that going forward for FIFA 20... I'll do a Liverpool career mode and make that the realistic career mode. And then we will make decisions in that. But I will also, from now on, always run another career mode alongside. You guys can choose the team. You can choose the players we buy. Make it as unrealistic as you guys want. And we'll have two career modes on the go. But there is a bit of a book, guys. I'm going to be uploading this week a little bit more of the Ajax Road to Glory than the Liverpool career mode. The reason for that is I was getting so confused comments from you guys games that have played scores i was getting so confused because both career modes right now they're both in, or they were both in pre-season we were both looking at you know signing players and budgets and stuff like that and moving on players changing numbers all stuff like that it was becoming very very confusing so i think what the plan is hopefully you should be seeing this on tuesday and also the liverpool match day vlog should have come out last night which should have been monday if you guys haven't checked it out definitely go and give it a watch this should come out tuesday there's going to be another episode of this on Wednesday. There's then going to be the Santiago going for goal on Thursday. And then I will upload the Liverpool career mode on Friday. So at least with the Ajax career mode, or the Ajax road to glory, should I say, we'll be six or seven games in. We'll have done the transfer window and we can start progressing with just the league. Whereas with the Liverpool career mode, we're still in the transfer window and we're still in pre-season. That is going to do it for today's episode, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. And I've been Massive Brad. Peace out.